And I'll get one break, one tiny bit of escape from this fucking continuous pain. Not one break, not one tiny bit of escape. I'm watching my mother disintegrate in front of me. I've done everything that I could do. I've done everything humanly possible. And that's why that woman who drove me to the vets, her friend from church, who she didn't even go to church the other day, she shows up here and she says, I'm not going. Told me to document everything, record everything. That's why I'm in constant communication with her primary care physician, okay? It never crossed my mind she would just not call up and say, I'm not going to my psychiatric appointment. I thought it was a done deal. I thought, no, she can't refuse to go to her psychiatric appointment. If she refuses to go to her psychiatric appointment on top of the things that I've said to these people who are useless and incompetent, they will show up here. And she knows that. She has to go to her psychiatric appointment. So I was positive. No, I'm sorry. I wasn't positive, but I, I, I thought, you know, you'd think that they would, they, you know, I, I, I've expressed genuine concern. They know she's been getting worse and worse for the past month. They're, they're in her life supposedly to, you know, to care and protect her in these kinds of situations, and they don't even fucking show up here when she skips her psychiatric appointment. And I call back and tell them it's not because she doesn't feel well, it's because she doesn't want to go. She's starving herself in front of me. I had to get out of here today, and it was a fucking storm. I just had to get away. I had to get out. I was going to take the bus to the mall and sit there. I wound up sitting somewhere else. It doesn't matter. I wound up sitting somewhere else. I could went to different places and sat because I know that I would, and I came home, and I shouted for her, and didn't even, she didn't even say anything, I also called numerous times, she didn't answer her phone, when I left, I said, you need to answer your phone, if someone calls you, mom, you need to answer the door, if you don't answer the door, and they, they know you're here, they'll send the police, they'll break it in, they didn't even care enough to call, you want to know why, because nobody fucking takes me seriously, that's why, they don't take me seriously. I don't want her sent off to a mental hospital. I want someone, a professional, to, to see her, to see that I'm telling the truth, to see she's in a bad way, and I just get fucking ignored. Left all day. I walked slow. If I got seriously hurt, almost dead, that's, that's it. My mom can't take care of the, the new the Omar that needs to be hand fed. She would have she wouldn't even think to do it. He would just fucking die. Just like Mandy. Mandy died. Because of her illness. It wasn't her fault, but it still happened. Mandy died a horrible death because she was neglected. And my mom's illness and my, my non-blood grandfather's alcoholism and poor Mandy, you know. I went to visit my mother, and Mandy had worms going like in and out of her body, and she had fur was stiff, and she was still fucking alive. I still had to leave today. 
I had to get out of here. I had to get away from her. I can't even believe she canceled that appointment. I can't even believe it. I had to get away even though I had to go in a storm. I was gonna have my friend just drove me down the street. But she had company, so I couldn't let her drive me to the street. I had to walk carefully. Knowing that if I got seriously hurt, we have to watch out for being hit by plows, too. People get hit by plows. Knowing if I got seriously hurt, we get hit by plows, we have to walk in the street. I can't wear my boots and walk in, in the snow because I, I, my feet, I have to wear my, I had to wear my sneakers in the goddamn storm because my boots don't have the, they're not designed for the, the, the insert. I came home and said, did you eat lunch today? Yeah, I ate lunch. I said, did you have that soup I bought? I had the soup. I said, I can look in the garbage and see if the container's there. And she goes, I didn't have the soup. I had peanut butter and jelly. No, you didn't. You didn't have peanut butter and jelly, and I know you didn't have peanut butter and jelly, and you're supposed to be a Christian. You lied through your teeth continuously. You said you'd go to your psychiatric appointment, and you said you did. she didn't eat lunch. And I said, I can I look in the sink, there's no dirty utensils. Okay, I didn't eat lunch. No shit, you're starving yourself in front of me. Joe, Joe says that you, you just, you've given up and you want to die. The people who want to die are still afraid to die. So they just, they just let themselves disintegrate and, and go to bed and, and the sleep and hope that they don't wake up. Yeah, sounds familiar, Joe. I can't even believe this. I, I can't believe it. She won't say what's wrong. She was doing so good. Like she was doing so good. We even went to her piano recital. I mean, I, I, I filmed it. I can watch. I mean, what the fuck? Like a light switch. But, but you cancel your psychiatric appointment? And I've told them that, that there's something going bad going on with you and you don't come here and just check it out. You're just proving to me what I already have been saying. You're useless and incompetent. This is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The police should have taken her last Monday. I was talking to somebody who said, I said, you know, when I couldn't, when I'm shaking her and I can't wake her up, I was terrified, terrified, so even though she's screaming, don't call, don't call, don't call, because she just wants to sit here and kill herself in front of me slowly. That's what she's doing. I'm watching her get thinner and thinner and thinner. That's making her more frail, more prone to fall, more prone to get sick. She's not getting any nutrition. I had to fight to get her to eat the small bowl thing, container of soup. First she said she wasn't going to eat it, then she ate it. That's still not enough. Two small meals a day, you're, you're going to waste away. Slowly. You're just barely, barely giving your body any nutrients at all. And I'm watching it happen. And again, it should have been over with. When I called 911 over a week ago, they should have taken her. And they didn't. They didn't. And then I waited patiently for today, where I knew it never crossed my mind she would just cancel the appointment. Never crossed my mind. Never crossed. I can't even believe this. I can't believe she canceled her fucking appointment. I can't believe she did it. And she sits there and wants hugs from me. And it's like, 
one thing that woman that the psychiatrist at the hospital said, oh, she's right. If you don't learn to deal with your pain over this, you're going to be in a facility. And what she could have added in is, and your mom's fate will still be the same. So just you'll join her, that's all. That was what went unsaid, okay, because that's the bottom line. That's what went unsaid. It was in so many words. You don't deal with this pain over your mother, you're going to wind up in a facility. And she could have continued on, and your mom's fate will be the same. The unsaid, you know, won't change anything. But what if I can't? What if I can't control this pain, you know? This is fucking hell. This is hell. I can't believe she could just do that, that she canceled her fucking appointment. It was finally, you know, it doesn't even mean he was in a section or it meant what it meant was that a professional was going to see her and see what I was talking about. That's it. That's it. See him telling the truth and make your decision. Not just her be hiding away. She hasn't walked out of this fucking front door in a month. In a month. I know it's been a month. I can check my calendar. Keep a track of everything. It was three weeks ago that she called the cops with me. And when she called the cops with me, she hadn't been leaving the house. So it's been a month. Because I remember thinking, telling her, you know, you haven't left this house in three weeks. You're going to see a psychiatrist and you haven't left this house in a month. Oh no, she can pick up the phone. I'm not going. I need to reschedule and pretend she doesn't feel well. It's all bullshit. I stayed up all night just to have her go to that. And then because I thought someone was going to come here. You know, you'd think. You know. Years ago they did. Years ago it was someone else telling them that one was offered to check up on her. See? Nobody takes me seriously. I only live with her, right? I only see her day to day. And nobody fucking takes me seriously. cops and all those paramedics and everything else should have taken me seriously last Monday. I was talking to someone who said, how do you know? I said, well, they checked her out. Yeah, but you don't know that she didn't have it. I don't, whatever the fact is, everything I was saying to them combined with me picking up the phone and calling them combined with all that, they should have taken her. We can't take her against her will. Get her blood work tomorrow. She won't leave the fucking house to go get blood work or a UTI or anything else. Or, or a urine, nothing. She won't leave the house. She wants to kill herself, figuratively speaking, in front of me. That's what she wants to do. That's what Joe says. She's given up. She wants to just stay here and not eat and mope and not leave the house and not do anything at all, not go to church, not leave the house, just kill herself in front of me. And I'm supposed to sit back and watch it happen. That's what she wants. That's why she didn't go to her psychiatric, psychiatric appointment. That's why she didn't go, go to church this past Sunday. That's what she wants to do. Just sit back and kill herself in front of me. Because that's exactly what she's doing. Unreal. Unreal. Those fucking people didn't take me seriously last Monday. I'm fucking believable. Unbelievable. Yeah, Joe's like, cause no one cares anymore. That's why Laura, that's what it is like these days. No one gives a fuck. That's why years ago, they, they, that agency, they show, showed up here when someone else said, you know, my mom was a little off or whatever. Oh, yeah, then they're here. They didn't take her, but they at least came and to see what was going on. But when Laura says it, no, we're not going to pay any fucking attention to Laura ever, are we? No, of course not. Of course not. Not until it's too fucking late. And Laura's conscience is clear because she's done everything and I have witnesses. I have fucking witnesses, okay? Witnesses that I've done everything humanly possible to get my mom the help that I know she needs. 
She's not going to get any help if nobody comes here to see her and she won't leave the goddamn house. You know, isn't it kind of a sign? She cancels her psychiatric appointment that's already two weeks overdue because he postponed it. And nobody comes here to check on her. No one even called. You'd think I checked her phone. You'd think they would at least call. At least called. Nothing. 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 They didn't even fucking call. The fact is, she needs to be seen by somebody who knows what her baseline is. Say, who knows that this is not even remotely normal for her. I'm sitting here in the twilight zone over here being talked to by one cop and someone who must have remembered her from before or something actually had the nerve, the nerve, one of those people that came here last Monday. So what, eight days ago. He actually said, she seems like she's at her baseline to me. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. I hold all you responsible who were here in my home last Monday and didn't take her when I was begging you to. When Even though she's screaming and crying for me not to call and I call and I tell you everything going on and you don't take her against her will. And then nobody shows up yesterday when I left all day long and the storm and could have fallen and my dog will be dead. If I get seriously hurt, my dog is dead. Period. End of discussion. He's dead. He'll die horribly, too. She can't take care of herself. You think she's going to take care of Omar or something that happens to me? She isn't!